So good morning. My name is Zarima Dosari. I'm from Texas A&M University, and I'm here today to present our project that studies the effect of nanoparticles on jet fuel spray performance. So nowadays, with the rapid increase of aviation transportation jobs and their resultant emissions, it was found that the aviation sector contributes about 3% to the global CO2 emissions at 2018. However, if we extrapolate the ongoing business, this contribution might increase up to 20% by mid-century. Therefore, we need to address the impact of this sector and come up with better engines or fuel to mitigate the resultant emissions. But before we come up with potential solutions, first we need to understand what is happening in here. So basically, the combustor of the aircraft is using the drop-in fuel to generate energy, and at the same time, it generates some undesired byproducts. Those pollutants are being derived from the used fuel, such as Jet A1. So we might ask how we can uh, reduce the aircraft emissions. We can do that by using cleaner fuels such as gas to liquid or use some kind of fuel additives that will enhance the combustion process and therefore mitigate the resultant emissions. So in this work, we were interested in using the nanotechnology, which is basically converting microscale micro particles into nanoscale particles. And we want to test the, uh, mix those particles with jet fuels and see how those particles will affect the fuel physical properties and eventually influence the spray performance. So our bottom, uh, bottom line or the basic idea is if we have better spray, we're gonna have a better combustion process and therefore less emissions. Also another motivation of ours is that there were no such studies reported uh, in the literature regarding GTL fuel with nanoparticles at elevated conditions. So we want to address that knowledge gap here. Now, in terms of the scope of this research, we want to understand what is happening inside the jet engine combustor. You can look at this figure. Basically, the jet fuel will be sprayed from a swirling nozzle and then breaks up at two stages and evaporate at the third till it meets, it meets the ignition source and then deflagrate. But our interest here is only the first two stages. And we plan to study that. So basically our plan is to, to use two different types of fuel. One is a conventional and the other is alternative. And we want to study those fuels with different nanoparticles concentration and to see how those particles will alter the fuel physical properties and how it will perform at amb high ambient conditions. And most importantly, we want to study the non-reactive spray performance. Now for the fuel preparation part, basically we took the base fuel, which is either type of the fuels that I mentioned, and we won't mix them with nanoparticles. And to ensure that the particles won't agglomerate or settle at the bottom, we added a surfactant. Also, we want to ensure that we have high levels of stability. We ultrasonicated all the samples in the study. Now for the spray facility, I just want to highlight that this, uh, the whole facility was developed as a part of a previous NPRE project. Now, if you look here, we have the spray vessel that is surrounded by a ballistic grade walls from all four sides to ensure high levels of safety. And we have the fuel supply system, fuel temperature control and data acquisition set up all outside. Now, if you look closely inside the, uh, at the spray vessel, you can see that we have a high speed camera attached and the spray vessel itself has four optical windows. Now, this is for the schematics. Basically, this is how it will work. Uh, the nitrogen gas and the fuel will all be supplied to the spray chamber and all the valves surrounding it with the high-speed camera will be controlled by the computer. Now for the imaging technique, this is a close-up to the spray uh, chamber. You can see that we have two encountering optical windows. One has a light source and the other one has the light uh, speed camera. The fuel will be sprayed from the middle here by a swirling nozzle and we'll get something like that. So the acquisition rate is 32,000 frames per second and all the captured images were used in the spray performance analysis. Now for the result, the result for the fuel properties, you can see that we have the properties here and we have the nanofuel concentration and nanoparticles concentration in here. And we have for each concentration, we have the two mentioned types of fuel. And what we notice is as we increase the nanoparticles concentration, we tend to have a thicker liquid, but it's less adhesive. Now for the spray performance, we, we evaluated three important parameters. The first one is the cone angle near the nozzle. The second one is the liquid sheet breakup distance. And the third is the spray velocity. 
and all experiments were performed at inert conditions. Now here I just want to highlight that AGP stands for ambient gas pressure. And here you can see that we have the spray image, but it was average, like thousands of uh, images were average to calculate the cone angle. And what we notice is as we go down, increasing the ambient gas pressure, the cone angle is being uh, converted in, uh, inwardly. Now there is a, so we notice that there is an inversely proportional relationship between cone angle and AGP. And the results were ranging between 36 degrees and uh, 24 degrees. However, those results were in the range of uncertainty and that was due to our source of limitation. It was because the, um, the cone angle is a function of the nozzle geometry, which, is, which in our case, it was only one nozzle. So that was a source of limitation here. Now for the breakup distance, I just want to highlight that the images on the right column are standing for high, ambient, uh, high AGP, the left low AGP, and here we have conventional fuel mixture of alternative and conventional, and here we have the alternative. And at the x-axis, you can see the distance away from the nozzle, and the y-axis is indicating the liquid sheet instability. The three colors here are standing for the nanoparticles concentration in which the blue is the base case. So what we conclude from this graph is peaks of each line indicating high liquid sheet instability, meaning that that is the breakup distance. And we noticed that all fuel results were close to each other, but the most important finding is that the presence of nanoparticles seemed to influence the breakup distance in which it reduced it at some cases. Now for the spray velocity, again, we have here high AGP, low AGP, Jet A1, mixture of Jet A1 and GTL and GTL. We have the y-axis, the velocity, and the x-axis is the distance away from the nozzle, same color legend. And the important finding here is that nanofuels have higher velocities, velocities decrease as AGP increase, and we have a high decline rate at high AGP. Now for the conclusion, we concluded that the nanoparticles affect near nozzle spray performance in which it influences the breakup distance and increase the liquid sheet velocity. Now for the cone angle, the change was marginal. And I just want to emphasize that this work highlights the effect, the effect of adding nanoparticles on jet fuel spray performance, which needs to be considered while evaluating the implication of those particles while doing uh, studies regarding the combustion stage. Now for post-project plans, we want to investigate different nozzle geometries to see their effect on the cone angle. And we want to elevate the experimentation phase from spraying to the combustion phase. For the outcomes of this project, we were able to publish a paper at 2018 at the proceedings of ASME. We participated in an annual meeting via poster and an abstract. And as for myself, I used, uh, I added two more fuels. That basically, those are the two of the three that I mentioned here uh, to submit a uh, thesis statement to Texas A&M University College Station and got awarded by a medallion and university level distinction. Also, just yesterday, we received our acceptance for publishing our second paper, and hopefully it will be online soon. Now for the acknowledgement, we want to thank QNRF for this Europe Award. Without it, this project would have been possible. And we want to thank Shell and QJET uh, for providing the fuels needed for the study. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Thank you, Reem. Uh, I would ask Dr. Drop to raise his question right now. Was the first? Thank you, Reem, and, and excellent work. Congratulations on those papers and, and uh, very, uh, very clear presentation. Thank you very much. <coughs> My you. question was on the selection of the aluminum oxide particle, mm -hmm. and uh, if you can articulate why aluminum oxide was selected versus anything else. Mm -hmm. um, so basically we tried to, we chose aluminum oxide because it was environmentally friendly and it was cheaper. We were able uh, to obtain it in quantities to, for the study. And also we tried the different types of uh, nanoparticle, which is iron oxide, but it tends to settle very fast at the bottom of the sample. So basically the aluminum oxide seemed to be the best candidate, like having the size of 13 microns. And uh, in terms of cost, in terms of environmentally friendly, and uh, in terms of the size, so yeah. 
Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. And I'll stick to one question per, per judge. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Drove, and thank you, Ari. Uh, next is Dr. Hisham. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hisham. Thank you, Reem, for a very interesting uh, and contentful presentation. Uh, one question, if I may. Uh, you, you, your hypothesis was correct in terms of uh, the, the effect of the spray, uh, the effect of the, um, and you've proven uh, the, the effect of uh, adding nanoparticles to uh, enhance the spray characteristics. But the spray characteristics uh, is but one of many factors affecting combustion and indeed mm -hmm. the engine performance in, in, overall. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, of course, uh, the question of deposition of nanoparticles uh, and the effect of that on the performance the, and the surfactants and so forth. So have you given any thought to uh, the effect of adding nanoparticles and surfactants uh, to the overall combustion process mm -hmm. and indeed the, the, the performance of the engine, including heat transfer and other factors. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So basically, from what we studied, like even from the literature, we found that uh, those change, like in terms of the surfactant and the nanoparticles, won't, uh, I'm sorry, it's only the surfactant that wouldn't change the chemical uh, characteristics of the fuel. So, but the, the presence of nanoparticles will, all, will affect the both the physical and the chemical uh, characteristics of the fuel. So we didn't concentrate so much into the surfactants because since it was reported already in the literature that it wouldn't uh, make that big much of change into the combustion process. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, in, in part, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you both. Uh, Dr. Gerard? Sorry, I was going to ask a similar question for Dr. Drew, which is, um, that's understandable. She, she answered that question why she didn't try to do, to use different nanoparticles instead of the variable to be the type of the fuel. Uh, and I, I, I wish she showed that some of her uh, results regarding that because um, probably different type of nanoparticles would have different performance in different types of fuels, even though she chose uh, aluminum oxide. So I would encourage her in the post project uh, to try different nanoparticles and uh, as Dr. Hisham to mix them with different surfactants and study them in more comprehensive way. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Jarrar. Um, uh, Dr. Hatem, please. Yeah, uh, thank you for this uh, informative uh, presentation. Uh, now we will suppose you are discussing, discussing with uh, your friend, which is not an engineer, mm -hmm. and you have to explain to him without using technical words, the main idea to keep in mind uh, as an outcome of this research mm -hmm. and the benefits to Qatar. How do you will present this? in a few words? Um, basically, this project fills the knowledge gap regarding the novel nanotechnology in terms of using it to enhance the jet fuel, uh, the, in general, enhance the performance of jet fuels. So basically, as being a part of the research community, each research study is complementing the previous studies done before. And it is our job to carry, uh, like, add and carry on pro from uh, what we uh, read and found in the literature regarding uh, the previous findings of uh, this nanotechnology. It's um, it's still a new technology, and probably it's ne it needs more than 50 years to be implemented at the pilot stage. All of what is being studied are still in the laboratory scale, so there is nothing uh, for the aviation. Part, at least. I know there is some kind of uh, implementation at pilot scale for uh, like car, uh, the car fuels, but there is nothing on the pilot scale regarding aviation fuels for this technology. Does that answer your question? Yeah, partially, but it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Still, we have uh, three minutes left. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you all.